Hi, it's Tim from Oracle Base. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to handle media files using Oracle REST Data Services. We create a test user called Test User 1 and grant it some privileges create session, create table, create sequence, and create procedure. We connect to the new user, which is where we'll do all the setup. We create a table called media to hold the uploaded files. There are columns for content type, file name and the content itself, which is stored as a blob. We create an API to hold any code needed to manage the images. In this case, we create a package called media API with a single upload procedure. Notice the file name, content type and content columns are represented as parameters. The package body implements the upload procedure. All it does is insert a record into the media table using the parameter values. Now we're able to do the ORDS configuration. We enable ORDS for the test user 1 schema and assign a base path of HR. This is a schema alias used in the web service URLs, which lets ORDS know it's dealing with objects in the test user 1 schema. We define a module called media to hold our media web services. We've made the module name and associated base path match. Now we have to define a template and handler for the upload procedure. This is a little more complicated than some of the other handlers I've demonstrated. First we have a template for the files path. Next we create a handler for the HTTP POST method. The source type for this handler is PLSQL. In the source we call the upload procedure, passing in bind variables of file name, content type and body. Assuming there are no problems, we set a status of 201 and a message to say the file's been created. If there is a problem, we set the status to 400 and output the associated error message. Content type, body and status code are implicit bind variables, so we don't need to define them explicitly. The body bind variable is a blob containing the payload sent to the web service. For the other bind variables, we need to define parameters to explain to ORDS how to process them. We define the file name parameter for this handler. We give it a matching name and bind variable name. And we tell ORDS it can be found in the header. It's a string and it's an input parameter, so it will be present in the request header. The message parameter is defined as an output parameter in the response, so any text will be presented as JSON. We also define a separate template and handler to download the files from the table. This time the template includes a file name parameter in the pattern. We define a get handler for this template. Notice the source type is source type media. If we provide a query containing the content type and contents, ORDS will do all the work for us to present it. Here we've returned the content type and content from the record with the specified file name. Now we can test the web services. From the command line we use curl to issue a HTTP POST. We pass in an image file as a payload. In the header we set the content type of image PNG and the file name to ORDS Media PNG. We post this call to the web service URL which includes the schema alias of HR, the module base path of media and the template pattern of files. When we run this we see a 201 HTTP response and a message telling us the file is created. If we try to run it again we get a constraint violation as we've said the file name must be unique. You could of course handle re-uploads or include a put handler to allow for updates. To retrieve an image we can put the web service URL into a browser and add the image name to the end of the URL. If we use a name that doesn't exist, we get a 404 not found response. You can make these types of media services as simple or as complicated as you like. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.